Yes, well, I'm really excited to chat with you guys today about what we've been working on in terms of gener uh, generative AI. Uh, about a year ago, a little under a year ago, when ChatGPT was really picking up steam, we at Acrol kind of put together a small team to start thinking about how we could apply Gen AI to you know, the, the domains that we're trying to help customers with. And what we looked at is the challenges that our customers were facing across data discovery, data governance, and data observability. This is kind of where we start with everything we build here at Acrol. On the discovery side, you know, one set of problems we were seeing is really around enabling less technical experts. This is actually something Luca was talking about a little bit there with logical data sets, but enabling less technical folks to be able to separate the signal from the noise, to understand what the high quality, compliant, reliable data really is that they should use for a given analysis, for example. Um, but also making that kind of technical context, so queries, you know, schemas, data quality checks, stats, easier to digest for those folks as well on the discovery side. On the governance side, we looked at challenges with maintaining compliance. So as I discussed in last town hall, you know, documenting and classifying sensitive data can take a lot of human effort. Um, and it's also restricted just to folks who understand the domain well, so the experts really. And then finally, we looked at data observability. So how can we you know, maintain quality or establish the safeguards around our data? so that we can prevent things like regressions. Again, one of the challenges our customers were struggling with here is just you know, how much human effort it really takes to get that coverage and the level of expertise that's required. So we were looking at the challenges and looking at which of these challenges were particularly well-suited to be supported in some way by Gen AI, by what we were seeing with tools like ChatGPT, Claude, et cetera. And the first thing we looked at was data documentation. So we talked a lot about this in the last session, but really what I'm talking about here is quickly establishing purpose for your assets, your columns, your dashboards to achieve compliance quickly. Running a, a governance initiative to backfill data documentation is something we actually did at LinkedIn uh, when we were there. And it, it took so much manpower to, to actually get that documentation in place after many years of sort of de decentralized uh, creation of data. The second was data classification. So I, I kind of alluded to this, quickly identifying the high risk assets across your organization, particularly when you do have a large decentralized organization, this can be extremely difficult to do uh, as a backfill process. And then finally, data discovery. So helping to discover sort of compliant, trustworthy and reliable data assets for everyone inside the organization. Again, separating the, the signal from the noise. And what we did is we kind of started experimenting uh, with some early customers and with our own data that we have here at Acrel um, on, on how we could build AI into the product. Initially, you could say we kind of brute forced it. So we would generate documentation and try to push that up for all of our data sets, tables, columns. Uh, same thing for classification labels. We had these scripts that would sort of push those into Data Hub. And what we saw really quickly is that AI is really not the silver bullet that we initially thought it may be. Um, we started to develop a bit more of uh, an understanding of where AI can really help as sort of a stand-in for human intuition. Uh, so you, you know, the AI not only, uh, it needs the context essentially around the domain in order to really be effective. And so what we found is that you know, ultimately, even if the AI has a lot of context, you still probably need a human in the loop for any type of high stake outcome, like governance, compliance, quality, even discovery. And not only that, but it has to be the right person reviewing. So it has to be someone who understands the domain, understands the specifics, or you'll end up with a bigger mess. And in fact, this is what we ended up doing initially is creating a much bigger mess for ourselves where we tried to generate a ton of classifications, generate a ton of documentation um, without actually having these systems in place for review and ended up just causing us a, a lot of headaches early on. And so what we developed over time is sort of a general framework of how we think about integrating AI into the product. So the first, it starts with AI generated recommendations or suggestions, and then it flows into human approval workflows. So that place for the human to say whether the AI is correct or incorrect before the, the kind of change is made to the metadata. Uh, continuous monitoring so that compliance is maintained over time. And then finally, hopefully, the outcome is compliant, discoverable, and reliable data. 
And our kind of goal is to use AI to help power this sort of feedback loop uh, to ultimately, you know, get that, that compliant, discoverable, reliable data across your entire data ecosystem, across those thousands of tables that you may have accrued over the last few years. And so I'm going to start with just the data documentation feature set that we, we ended up coming up with. And to talk about that, I'll hand it over to uh, my colleague, Herschel, who I think will take over the screen share. Yeah. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, so I'll be going through um, some of the features we've built out for data documentation. So as John mentioned, we started this like over a year ago, um, and our initial attempts looked like this. You know, we'd generate some metadata about some documentation, but you know, it's kind of overly structured on, or overly focused on you know listing out the columns and you know highlighting information that kind of we already show in the UI. Um, and it doesn't really have kind of a deeper understanding of what is this table? What is it doing? What do we use it for? Um, and broadly, it just doesn't look like something that anyone, any person would come along and actually manually type out. And so we spent a lot of time iterating on it. We landed on something that looks a little bit more like this. Um, and why is this better? Well, one, it captures kind of high level content insights about the asset. It tells you where did it, where did the data come from? Uh, how was it generated? If there were complex SQL transformations, it will kind of highlight some, some information about those. And it will also tell you like, why, why does this matter? What do we use it for? Um, and if there's like important downstream use cases, we will highlight that as part of the description as well. Um, of course, if you're looking at this to do your own analysis or build your own report, you want to know how to use it. What is the grain of the data? How do we query it? What can I join it with? Things like that. And then, of course, if there are any PII or anything like that, we also want to know about that information um, so we can kind of at least highlight it and then take additional actions based on how sensitive it is. Um, and so broadly, it gives you a much better sense for what is the data set, how do we use it? Um, and that way, you know, this looks like something that a real human would come along and, and actually write. So that's just slides. We can also take a look at how this looks in the actual Acryl product um, or in the Data Hub Cloud product. And so broadly, when you come to a given table, if we've generated descriptions for it, you'll see those right off the bat. Um, we tag them with a little star icon. It's very important that we kind of distinguish human written content from generated content. And the reason is um, it kind of depends on, you know, human generated content is like higher caliber and like very um, known to be trustworthy. The generated stuff is something that like people have reviewed, um, but is auto generated and there could be mistakes. And so it's really important to highlight like, both in the column documentation as well as in the overall table documentation that these things were generated with AI. Um, now, if we have something that doesn't have documentation, we can just hit the generate button. Um, and you know, this is a live demo, but broadly, purchase events, we have some documentation about it. Um, we can skim through this, we can edit it as we need, um, and then insert it into the table and then save that. Um, and then of course, for the columns as well, we can go over and just hit the generate button. And for these, it will just go through and generate column documentation for all of the columns. Um, and it will highlight that they are generated with AI. Um, the column descriptions tend to be like extremely high quality. And so we opted not to do like a manual step where you edit every single column um, just because it'd be like really, really tedious. But for the table documentation, we really recommend that um, the workflows, you generate something, edit it, 
kind of fix it up, add additional insights that you might have, and then hit save. Um, and that's how we kind of bring the human into the loop here without making them do like a ton of work of kind of documenting things that we can already infer from the metadata that we have about the table. And of course, if I come along to a query that I don't understand, you know, for the, let's say I'm looking at this LTV table and here's how it's generated. And this is a little bit confusing to me. I can also just hit summarize on these. Um, and it will come back and kind of tell me what is this thing doing? It says, a, you know, active customers purchased in the last 90 days. It can tell me like, how how is it produced and things like that. And then I can go and save this as the, as the documentation for the query as well. I feel that this is um, super helpful. Um, so yeah, that's how we uh, enable data documentation and data discovery with generative AI. I'll hand it back to you, John. Awesome, thanks Herschel. All right, now we're going to go into the next section, which is mainly focused around the second problem, uh, data classification. I'm gonna follow a similar format to how Herschel did it. Um, so about a year ago, we, we kind of introduced a classification module into our ingestion framework. This was our first take on data classification. And how it was configured is basically what you're seeing on the right side here where you would provide a set of glossary terms, which are you know, just standard labels, and then regex patterns for which columns or which tables these glossary terms should be applied to. This is generally used based on the name of the column or even the value of the column, which is kind of what you're seeing down here. And for a while, this was our solution to data classification. We would ask customers, we would ask folks from the community to simply use this, this configuration format to classify their data. Now, over the last year, we've seen a lot of major challenges with this. The first is coverage. Obviously, it's really difficult to capture all the edge cases with simple regex or string-based matching, as you may imagine. The second is around customization. So we shipped this with a default set of labels, things like email address, social security number, phone number. But most customers actually had custom business terms. They were more specific to their domain that they wanted to add. And the process of adding those was complex, it was error prone, it was time consuming. You had to be technical and you had to go into that YAML and, and make those changes. And then finally, it was difficult to actually iterate on your classification rules. So because it was part of ingestion, when we ingest, we would apply the classification rules, we would apply the glossary terms and you would see the results on the UI immediately. There was no human review uh, and, and it was kind of difficult to understand how to iterate on this. So now I'm gonna walk you through uh, where we're going with data classification on the Gen AI track at Acryl. And to do so, I'm gonna go to our, uh, actually I'll start with our business glossary because that's kind of the central place that we define our classification labels. Inside of here, I already have a glossary called information types. And this contains all sorts of standardized labels, things like age, first name, last name, email address, home address, you know, you can imagine all the classification labels we may want to use for compliance purposes. So that's kind of the first step here. We provide a business glossary and ideally we provide documentation for each type in the business glossary. This is gonna become important in a few minutes. And I'll, I'll talk about why a little bit later, but you can see here we're providing a user's age and we're also giving some examples about what the age may be named uh, in terms of the columns. The second step is we're gonna go over to the automations panel in Acryl UI, and we're gonna create an AI glossary term suggestions automation. What this automation does is it allows us to select either specific glossary terms or specific glossary term groups. For example, I can select the information types that we just saw. And then it allows us to select which asset types we'd like to apply these glossary terms to. So we can apply them to columns, we can apply them to tables. Finally, we choose if we wanna propose the terms and I'll show you what that looks like in this demo or if we wanna apply the terms directly to the data sets or the columns. We can give a maximum number of terms that should be applied for each data set or each column here. And then finally we click save and run. So I've already had this, this glossary term suggestions automation running for a bit. 
and it actually does use that information types um, binding for the glossary. So once this has been running, what you'll start to see is that glossary term suggestions or proposals will be in your inbox. And what you'll see is that Data Hub AI has requested to add glossary terms from that information types to columns and tables from your warehouse. It'll actually scan across all of your tables by default. So anything you have in Snowflake, BigQuery, Databricks will be included here. And what we can see is that they're fairly uh, high quality. So you can see we've got things like home address being applied to columns called city, state, address. We've got email addresses being identified correctly as well. And there's kind of two places you'll see this, not only in this inbox where the owners of the data and the admins can come in and review either one at a time or in a bulk fashion, but you'll also see this appear on the actual page for the data set. So if we go into the data set, you'll see that there are these terms that have been recommended. And you can see with this little clock that these are proposed and they're pending approval. I can even come into here and actually approve or reject these term proposals directly from here. So obviously the primary use case is getting really uh, broad coverage for sensitive data types extremely quickly. That's the, the major goal here. All right, with that, I'm gonna hop back into the slides. Mama, what's the be? Oral, I think you're unmuted. Uh, John, if you could unmute yourself. I muted everybody, sorry. Could you unmute? <laughs> yep, thanks. <laughs> All right, no problem. So what did we just see? Well, we saw a new automation in Acryl AI that allows you to select glossary terms that are custom to your organization and then apply them with AI. So why is this really interesting and more useful than the regex-based approach? The first is it's easy to customize the labels that are applied. In fact, you can use any glossary that you would have. The interesting thing is because there's Gen AI powering all of this, the documentation around each glossary term actually is, is kind of a part of the quality. So if the quality of recommendation isn't as you would expect, how you can improve the performance of the system is simply going into the documentation of the glossary terms and providing more context. The more context you provide, the better the AI will do at applying your custom terms to your data. This is really, really powerful. The second piece is validation. So by having proposals, we allow that human in the, in the loop workflow so that humans can come in and review uh, in bulk even and apply those labels. And then finally, there's no brittle or hard coded regex rules here. This is all dynamic. So you can catch a lot of the edge cases that you previously could not. It improves with feedback, as I mentioned earlier. And just a quick couple um, things John, about what we learned. Yep. Just, just really quickly, we have like four minutes left. And I know that I just want to prep everybody. Shushanka does have a quick, exciting session for you guys. So please stick around. It's on AI. Go ahead, John. Awesome. Apologies. Yes, I had a feeling this may go a little bit long here. Um, OK, so pretty similar to what Herschel said. Uh, this is kind of what we've learned over time by building this system. I won't go into too much depth here but feel free to reach out to me if you guys have any questions.